Okay, 23 past the hour. That? I did do. I respect that? you a Everybody great deal, Joe. Everybody else did, uh -huh. yes. You know what I always say. Yes. People don't talk about McKinley enough. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. And so I, I have for the past 10 years, when I leave, I, I have, I'm wearing this all <laughs> Me day. Me too. And it's, mm -hmm. I, we all are. We are. Exactly. <laughs> what the hell, Carl Rove? <laughs> I, I, Joining I, us now, senior I can, advisor to President Bush, Carl Rove. I can only guess you're here. I mean, I guess Rachel Maddow's uh, shows at night, so you <laughs> must, there must have been a conflict. I can't, I can't stay up. Must have had a conflict. He's got a new book out. It's called The Triumph of William McKinley, Why the Election of 1896 Still Matters. So we want to talk oh, about the election of 1896 in a little bit. One of the things I did see, though, on MSNBC, <laughs> prime time, uh, last week, which uh, was shocking to me, a very long clip of uh, 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 who, who showed that? Who showed that? Chris Hayes, I think. Chris Hayes. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Hayes showed about a 10 minute clip of George W. Bush on the 18th of September mm -hmm. talking to an Islamic center. Mm -hmm. It was riveting. Mm -hmm. On Massachusetts Avenue, Northwest. It Washington. was yeah. riveting, yeah. talking, talking. And I was just saying, you can do two things at once. You can fight a war on terror, sure. and you can also right. call out people who are xenophobic right. in your right. own party, in right. your own country. Well, and you can also uh, challenge uh, the Muslim community to, to help confront Islamic terrorism, which is what he did. And, uh, you know, you can both say this is not us against Muslims, but you can also say uh, this great religion has a responsibility to confront those who would attempt to pervert uh, its its tenets and in, uh, in, in uh, support of violence. Are you concerned about the direction of the Republican Party right now? Yeah. Uh, the xenophobia. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about the direction of some Republican candidates. Let's not say it's the Republican Party. I mean, you Democrats could sit there and say we're concerned about the Democratic Party if they think Bernie Sanders is going to be the nominee. But right. Uh, yeah, I'm worried. I'm worried about uh, what? What, what specifically? Candidates. Well, look, I, I, Republicans are not going to win this next election by finding a missing uh, magic cache of conservative voters who have heretofore loyally supported us, but were turned out by turned off by those arch liberals, John McCain and Mitt Romney. That simply is a myth. It's sort of like trying to refight the Civil War as a lost cause. Right. And uh, in order to win the next election, Republicans are going to have to have confidence in their conservative ideals and say we can take them to the, the Latino community, the African-American community, the Asian community, young people. and we Could can Donald Trump votes. win a general election? Uh, my view is no, but we'll see. Why not? Well, if, you, if, if Mitt Romney lost with 27 percent among Latinos, right. how good would somebody go do who's got an 11 percent approval rating? So who can, can who can stop Donald Trump right now? Uh, the person who can uh, uh, talk about their vision. It's not about stopping Donald Trump. He's got a high floor and a low ceiling. It right. is about consolidating the 70 to 75 percent of the Republican primary electorate that is either turned off on Trump or available to somebody. Right. Can he win the nomination? Pardon me? Can he win the nomination? Oh, sure he can. I mean, you can make a case that it probably six or seven people can make the nomination. Do I think it's likely? No. So, Coral, and again, I'm, I'm sure you've got your favorites. I'm, I'm curious, though, who, if you look at the blocking and tack tackling of politics, we've been talking a lot about Ted Cruz lately. Does and Ted, you should be. Does Ted, you should be. Does Ted, when you get to the blocking and tackling, the money, the organization, everything in those early states, first five, six, seven states, is Ted Cruz in the best position just to politically on the fundamentals? Uh, in one state, yes, Iowa, but not necessarily in more than one state. He sort of made the bet that he's going to try and be, he's going to be the guy who, he's counting on Trump collapsing and him inheriting his people, which is why he doesn't say things, bad things about him, goes out of his way to say, I'm saying nice things about him. Right. It's pretty cynical, and I suspect that, that Trump has got that this is a guy who really does it, who's counting on him failing. Right. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing to me is that in Iowa, he has been meticulous and, uh, you know, built a, a, a the, the Caucus organization like a caucus organization. So he's doing well there. Two what different about, styles. What about, you got you got you got Trump going in gigantic events. Right. A couple of them. Uh, Cruz going at it the traditional way. I'm going to cover as many counties as possible. Build the teams that will get the people in each precinct. There's a the shocking county. story yesterday in the New York Times. Shocking because they actually said something nice about Chris Christie talking about possible comeback with who's, Chris Christie, who is doing the we've, same we've thing kind in of, New Hampshire. Yeah. Can can Chris Christie come back? Look, look. I, it, yes, theoretically, all of it will they. I don't know. That's what makes this so exciting. We've never think about this in the history of the Republican Party. Never had, even back in the days in which we had all these favorite Sun candidacies, we never came close to 17 candidates. We got 14 left today, and you can make a plausible case that five or six of them 
uh, have a way, or seven of them can get can make a way to the nomination. But it requires lightning to strike. But in this election, lightning is going to strike for somebody. Thank you. Carl, you're obviously intimately familiar with the Bush family. What's going on with Jeb Bush? He can't uh, get above five or six percent. You use that word intimately. I think oh, might be slightly no, I mean, inappropriate. Will you want, you understand the thinking and the, the internal politics of the Bush family? I had nothing more than that, Carl. What's going on with him? Why can't he get above five or six percent anywhere? Well, in part because we have 17 candidates, and 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 he's had he had a bad debate, and it's been followed by three reasonably good weeks in which he's begun to sort of show who he is and let it all hang out. But uh, but he's in the barrel, and he's going to have to work his way out of the barrel. But he was a great gov. I mean, I'd say it every it's day. Unbelievable. A great governor, one of the most <coughs> competent, intelligent leaders I've ever seen in my life, and yet he's just not connecting this year. Yeah. Why? Well, look, this is a mystifying election. We have an, a big part of the Republican electorate is just angry. They're so concerned about well, the direction of the country, of what they think the president has done or will do or is doing to the country. And they, they don't really care what, what you've done before. The question is, are you angry? Do you share that angst? And are you going to pick up a brick and throw it through the plate glass window? And right now, the guy who has sort of got a bunch of that among blue-collar Republicans is Donald C Trump. But look, we are, we are at an early place. I, I love how people say, well, look, at this point, at the beginning of uh, December in 2012. Well, actually, go back to the beginning of November, because it, d December 1st, of 2011, we were going to start voting in January. Go back right. to the 1st of November, and we were starting cane mania. We still had to go through Gingrich time. 666. 666. 999. That's the Antichrist. Yes, the Antichrist. Aha, Nicole has now shown her. <laughs> exactly. Right. Right. Trouble. Can I ask you about something I said earlier? President Bush was always very wary of this strain of isolationism, whether it came. I remember when big trade deals were up, he was worried. Yeah. Immigration, right. when we tried and failed. Yeah, but can you yeah. talk about the effect that's had? The president got the has to be constantly talking about these things. He's got to be out there. I, the, the points you were making earlier about, sure, part of the problem with President Obama on terrorism and on, uh, on, on the concerns about uh, refugees and concerns about trade deals is he doesn't talk about these issues. There are also policy problems there, particularly when it comes to, uh, in, in my opinion, in, in the, the Middle East, there's a bad policy there as well. But any president has to spend more time and more energy and more effort advocating their policies in order for people to understand them and so thereby support them. Harold has a question. Jump in. Harold. Carl, you, you mentioned that, that uh, Governor Bush is having some problems. He's not had a good debate, but uh, uh, some bad debates, but trying to find his way back in. If it's not Jeb, uh, who do you think can emerge? You said six or seven candidates, but who would you say could emerge to take Trump down? Without well, articulate the vision you lay well, out. Look, let, the, 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 let's let's to have the. I'll put them in alphabetical order, which means it'll take me a few seconds here to figure it out. But we, but there are candidates who can plausibly win the nomination: Bush, Christie. Cruz, I put Carson in there, sorry, Kasich, Trump, and Rubio. Well, you're saying nothing. I mean, what's the answer of who could really break through without lightning? Nobody's going to nobody's, nobody's gonna, an nobody's gonna break through without lightning. If, if, if you're have betting have money. So then, uh, if you're betting money on it. If I'm betting Trump. money? Uh, yeah, two, the top two right now that have, have the best shot. Uh, three. Three. Uh, Bush. Christie, Rubio, re alphabetical order, Bush, or reverse alphabetical order, Rubio, Cruz, Bush. So, the secret so in here. The secret is in there. The secret yes. is in there. So, so Hey YouTube fans, I'm Luke Russert. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.